And just like that, it's February. Hey, you guys, welcome. This is Melissa with The Creative Season, and I'm starting out the month with really simple, fun watercolor cards. So as you can see, these are not going to take a lot of skill. We're going to do lots of colors on big pieces of watercolor paper. We're going to create some very easy hearts, some flowers. Um, I found a bunch of stuff around the house, with even some stamps and markers. So use what you have to create these really fun Valentine's cards with a very much an artistic flair. And I also have a very special mes message for you for this Valentine's Day. So I hope that you have a lot of fun with these projects and bring some joy to someone else's life this month with these gorgeous cards. Hey everyone, Melissa here with The Creative Season. We have a special Valentine's Day project. I'm super excited. Now listen, I think the tendency during Valentine's Day is to focus on ourselves, right? I have been single forever and ever. I've never had a boyfriend or husband or anything like that, but I still love Valentine's Day. I love the pink, I love the chocolate, I love creating and I love all the colors. And I think this is a great Hallmark holiday to flip what the culture is saying. So it's all about me and thinking about me. No, 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 let's flip it. Let's do two things. First of all, we're gonna put some of that energy into creating something really fun. And whenever we focus our energy into creating and using our hands, I just find a lift in my spirit. Second of all, Let's make sure that we're using, we're gonna do something that we're gonna mail to someone else. So who's maybe one or two people? It's not like when we were kids and we had to do like 25 Valentines to everyone in the class. It'd be so much work, right? But no, we're gonna just send out these lovely Valentine cards. You can slip a bookmark or this card in the mail. And who needs to be reminded that they're loved today? Who maybe is feeling a little bit lonely, is going through a rough time with an illness, and you can just brighten up their day. So let's definitely you know, flip the narrative, and remind people that they're loved and they're cared for and that's such a special part of our lives. And we're gonna create something really fun and lovely. I've used a lot of things that I have found around my place as I was doing some of the cleaning out, but I'll share everything that I'm doing with you and what you can find if you need to do a little bit of shopping. So have fun and in the comments below, I'd love to hear who you are sending your Valentine's to this year. Okay, everyone, we are getting ready to do our Valentine project. And I've got to tell you that my goal really with this project was for anyone who just wants to create some really fun handmade homemade Valentine's Day cards using either what you have at home um, or maybe just doing a quick run to the craft store. And really, you do not have to paint painting abilities. Really, we are going to do um, just a couple of flowers, but it's certainly not. You don't have to. So supplies. I was looking around at what I had and what you're definitely going to need is you're going to need some watercolor paper. So I've got a premium watercolor pad. This is one I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, you can grab something as small as this because we're just going to do some splattering and some small things. If you also don't have a larger piece as well, um, we are going to be creating an ombre. So this was just a larger watercolor pad, uh, a really an ombre. Um, uh, well, I can't even find words. We're basically gonna create these really fun hearts. Lots of hearts as well as we are gonna just use everything that we have to create really fun either watercolor cards or watercolor bookmarks to stick into the mail. Also, one of the things I found was if you have just cardstock card stock note cards hanging around, I found some blank ones that I put splatter paint on, we'll do that. Um, I had some pink ones. Um, if you wanna put splatter paint on these cards, remember you don't, they don't take water, too much water, so just do a little bit of splattering. Other things that will be nice to have, if you have any sort of like heart stamps, so like I dug around, I found this one. Um, these are ones I might've found these at, Use either Target, the Dollar Store, Michael's, something like that. But these are not really fancy. I found this one, which is really cute, called You're Just My Type. There's an I Love You one. So just, if you have any stamps, that'll be fine, but not necessary. Um, you're gonna wanna grab a Micron pen. If you do wanna play with some stamps, go ahead and grab some markers. This is what we're gonna use to mark them up. Also, if you have a hole punch, and then either some ribbon like this, or, Ribbon, like again, craft store Valentine's Day ribbon. This is a great opportunity. If you put away your Valentine's stuff last year and you're like me and then you figure out, um, oh, that's right, I've got all that Valentine's Day stuff, go pull it out now so we can use it, right? Also, I am gonna be using a glue gun because when we start assembling these together, I find that with watercolor paper, a uh, glue stick is not strong enough. However, regular glue will work or cement glue, that'll work too if you do not have a glue gun or just you don't wanna burn yourself with a glue gun like I occasionally do. So I think that's everything we're gonna need. Some of these are optional, but go and gather your supplies and we'll get together and do the prep work for the cards. 
Okay, everyone. Okay, we are going to start. Um, I have a 9 by 12 piece of watercolor paper, glued, not glued, taped. And I am just using Strathmore watercolor, so it's 9 by 12. It's 140 pounds, which is a nice thicker um, texture. It's going to be able to hold a lot of water. Now, we're going to be doing a couple of things. So I also grabbed one of my watercolor boards, or just it's a drawing board. I think this was about $11 at Hobby Lobby. That's where I found the best price for these. I've got the masking tape down, and we're just going to do almost like an ombre over this paper and then we're going to be moving on while this dries. So um, we'll end up cutting this up into all sorts of different things, but I have a couple of colors. I've got Cadmium Red Deep here. I've got pink. I had been mixing a little bit of orange, but we'll wash that off. I think that's a phthalo pink here. And so we're just gonna go, I have some magenta right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this. Where's, well, like, I have my coffee, but I don't wanna dip it into my coffee, do I? Um, we're gonna grab my paintbrush and go ahead and get those really nice and wet. And if you have a purple, even grab a purple. I'm gonna do some red. So I'm gonna get this red nice and wet. I'm gonna get the pink nice rub. We're actually gonna mix a little bit of them together. And I'm gonna rinse my brush really well. Come on to this side of the pink so I can just get a pure pink over here. As pure as I can, because you can tell. And if you ever notice too, you're like, gosh, I had some other colors. Just grab a paper towel or a regular towel, a cloth towel that I have here, and just, just dab out the entire palette like that. You could also rinse it out. Oops, I picked up some of the paint, which I did not mean to do. And then just rinse your brush really well and see, okay, so let's see how that's that beautiful pink. There we go, I got all of that yellow that I had in there out. So once I have this, now I have a pretty small paintbrush. I'm gonna go for a bigger paintbrush since I'm literally going to be soaking the paper in this um, beautiful pinks and purple of different colors. So I'm gonna grab this brush here. It's a much bigger, maybe just grab the biggest brush you have. It doesn't need to be that nice tip. If it's a, a square end brush or a, a different kind of brush, that's fine. We're not doing, we are literally just gonna go ahead and just start laying down that paint. And I'm gonna just move down really nice and easy, adding lots of water. Remember your paints always are going to dry lighter. And I'm gonna move that down here, keeping that really pure pink in the center area. I'm just gonna move that down. I'm gonna grab more water now and just spread some of that pink all the way down to the end over here. Just like that. I'm gonna pick up some more pink now. And you can see even where it's starting to, you know, where it's starting to deep in an areas, right? Which we want, we definitely want that. Go ahead and grab your red if you're using the red. I'm gonna just bring the red over here. And that went on pretty thick. I'm just gonna grab some extra water. We're gonna let it move down a little bit into the pink. I'm gonna grab some more water and just let that blend. I mean, this is Valentine's Day after all, so this is just basically all those really, the pink is nurturing, the red is passionate, right? Intensity. So between the two, we just have a lot going on here. But you can see too how I'm kind of able to blend them. That way it's not a fine line per se. And again, it's almost getting that ombre look in there. Isn't that fun? I think you, know, you can just take your time doing this. I wanna move a little bit faster just because I don't know how exciting it is actually to watch me do this, if you're watching. Now on the other side, over here, I'm gonna grab my magenta. The magenta is almost more, isn't that beautiful? More of your berry. And you may decide what your favorite color is and just do one or two things of that instead of three different colors. I'm gonna just now take that down and bring it all the way up. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. I'm gonna go back to the pink. And I find that this magenta and pink, they just blend beautifully together. Isn't that lovely? I, I honestly think this is even prettier than the red and the pink, but that's just me. I love that, I love the berry colors. If you're noticing, you're like, whoa, that berry's taken over. It does have a tendency to. I mean, going back to my pink, just getting it that brush saturated, coming back in here now, and then just brushing back into it. If you wanted to, you could always dab some off, but honestly, I think this is gonna dry really, really, really nicely. I'm gonna go back one more time, 
pick up a lot, a lot, a lot of pink. And I'm just gonna move that. Just let that kind of dabble and move. You might notice some buckling, not a big deal. Smooth it out just so we don't have what I would call um, that look of almost like a watercolor stain. But that way, I'm just gonna let that dry now. I'm gonna just set this over to the side. We're definitely getting some variations, but again, we're gonna be cutting this out. It gets a beautiful ombre. You wanna grab the smaller brush, rinse it off really good, and then with that rinse, you can even just, if you see anything that you just wanna smooth out a bit, smooth it out. <clears throat> that looks lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna move that away now. And the reason I had put that on the board was because I wanted to do some splattering with my smaller pieces of paper here. This is some paper I found at Hobby Lobby, and I'm gonna show you the pack. It was a watercolor pad, $3.99, so great price, and four by six inches, and there's 15 sheets, which I love that. So you've got a lot of sheets. We're gonna use a couple of these now, and I just wanna splatter on them. So I'm, you notice I'm not even, I don't have these glued down. We're not gonna be putting tons of paint on them right now. I just wanna start splattering. So I've got, you can see that magenta really showing through, and I am on my art table where it's easily, I can just wash this off with a clean, wet, wet towel after we're done, so I'm not too concerned. <clears throat> if you feel like, you once again, you need to dab at your palette and get some of that excess blending of color off, go ahead and do that. Again, I'm gonna come back over here, and you can just do some splattering. I'm gonna grab a bit of the red, splatter over on this one. We're gonna come back and add some more different details to this, but we just have to prep everything right now. And I'm actually, I think this is gonna be really, really fun and really pretty. Now, if there's any other colors you wanna add on, for example, if maybe we said we wanted to do a background of, even let's do, you know, let's even grab some brown. Let's grab some brown. And I wanted to do some brown splatters because then we'll be adding on a lot of pink and red and we want just a bit of neutral. And I'll just do some more brown splatters over here as well. So you can see I am not really being too careful about this. I am letting those splatters go all over the place. I'm not even trying to focus them like we would do sometimes when we're doing splatter flowers. This is very, very, very random and free. Okay, so this is gonna be our prep. Now let everything dry. We want it to be nice and dry before we do more layers on top. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just draw and paint some really beautiful flowers. So this was a piece, I'm still waiting for some of the paper to dry. This was a piece of paper I used with blues and it had already dried some time ago. And I am gonna go ahead and I'm just going to use the Micron pen, making sure you can see this. I can even come down, okay, a little bit farther or come in, back up just a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just maybe, I don't know, it's a tulip that's opening up is what I'm thinking. And let's go ahead, or maybe one of those wildflowers that I had been creating last year. That one's on the other side looking in and I'm just gonna create a little bit of a leaf here. I don't want it too big because we're gonna be cutting these out and then putting them on the note card paper, right? Because watercolor cards, like stationary cards to paint on, they're rather expensive and oftentimes I don't want to, it just doesn't quite work out and then you're really disappointed, right? But so it's funner, I think it's a little bit more fun Two, I'm gonna do another one, even, let's pretend, we'll do a little bit of a, almost a rose style with this one. We'll see, maybe not, maybe we'll, we'll just end up going with the tulip. But anyways, as I was saying, it was just, it's a, I think it could be a little bit more um, fun to create quickly. I'm gonna straighten this petal out here so it does look a little bit more like a rose. Create a little bit quicker and um, use pieces of watercolor and then glue them or adhere them onto the note cards that are really good prices. And if you mess up one, you don't really feel really bad. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this one or not. And that's okay, so we're gonna go ahead with the rose. You'd usually have the stems like that. And we might just call this my pretend made up flower. 
because that is kind of how it's looking and that's okay. So again, I'm kind of just doing light layers of petals. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my paint, my watercolor now. And so I have clean water. I am gonna go ahead for this side. I'm gonna use some more of the red and I am just gonna start laying in some layers here, not feeling the need to go really dark or bold. And over here, we are just creating a couple of cards. You might find yourself getting into a rhythm and you wanna create several cards. Or maybe you also wanna use these, you create a card, then you create some things for to put into your journal or whatnot. Lots of different ways we can use these in projects as well. So I've got maybe I'm going to pull just a little bit of pink and add in a little bit of pink in here. You notice I'm not putting in tons. I'm not filling out every single petal. Looking at two where we might have a little bit of shadowing. Putting that in there. Very nice. Okay, so that is, that is one of mine. I'm going to add another one right out here. I just feel like it needs to be filled out a bit more. And then in here, just filling it up a tad bit more. Okay, I'm also gonna then go back, and rinse out my brush. I'm gonna get a little bit of a thinner edge one. So then when I go for the green and bring that in, I just don't wanna get too much into the red because red and green make brown. I don't mind if there's just a little bit of brown for maybe some, a little bit of shadowing. I just don't want too much. I am gonna go grab a darker green. There we go, get that hookers. This is the dark, dark one. There we go, That's that looks good. Add in some boldness right in there. And then I'm also just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna flip this with my rather wild flower up here and add in, since I already have the green going, we're just gonna add in these cards I'm sorry, the cards, the, this, these leaves, if you wanna maybe make it where we're gonna have the edges of the leaves, the details showing up. I always love the design on every single leaf is often unique, right? And I'm gonna just leave it just like that and then come up on this side. And I know that looks funny as I have one facing one side and the other facing the other, like a deck of cards. Just one way to not waste any of the water, watercolor paper. And I think on this side, we're gonna go ahead and use that magenta, that really, um, the pink purpley color. I just think that's such a gorgeous color. If you feel like you're using that one or maybe you're using a purple, but you want it to be a little bit more pinky, I'm just gonna add a little bit of pink together in the palette and then come over here. And this is kind of a little bit more like a wildflower. I'm gonna bring that petal down here, being careful not to touch the green too much because again, we don't want those colors to merge together. I'm gonna go ahead and just real light, that's maybe a bit too dark, too intense, I'm gonna just I put water on my brush. I'm gonna come back in now. There we go, and then pull this down. Just doing a little bit. This is actually the one that's facing us. We can see into, into it, the interior petal. So I'll just add in some color there and then bring it down. I'm gonna let it touch the gray a little bit. That'll turn a little bit brown, but it also is gonna create a bit of a shadow, which I want. Put a little bit of the dabbing the edges of my petals. And this looks really nice. This looks, I like this a lot. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and let these dry. And then what we'll do is we will cut them out. So I'm gonna set those to the side. We're gonna cut them out here in just a minute. Okay, now that your paper has completely dried, go ahead and start cutting strips of the paper and creating hearts. So what I did is I just used a paper cutter to create the long strips and then cut hearts down the row. And that way, not only did I have the hearts, but I also had that nice heart frame, which we're also going to incorporate into our cards. Okay, so we're back. I've got some tea here because it's a nice cold day. I'm recording this at the end of January. I've got all my items out. I had found this rose that we had painted earlier this month. 
I have um, cut out those flowers. And so what I did, and you can see the splatters come through very, very nicely. And I've got this flower too, which I just ended up cutting out. I cut it out fairly close because I thought it would be fun if, for example, I am gonna start laying some things down. I might have fun put laying it down on some pink and letting that pink paper show through. So I've got that. Um, we have already you know, cut out all of your hearts. So if you did that beautiful ombre paper, we have our hearts and please, you know, we're gonna use, I like to use as much as we can. So the beautiful area that we, that the heart frames is really what they are. We're gonna use those too. So I'm gonna just go ahead and just start doing some assembly here. So you'll see on this particular card, now this is maybe a little bit corny. I just basically took some scribbling of pens. I took a stamp and stamped it around. And then on this um, piece of watercolor paper that has some of those splatters, I just had stamped the heart. So what am I gonna do here now? I can, I thought I would just honestly just go ahead and either glue it here or I think I'm gonna do right here. So we have, again, just a little, little bit of a layering. It's just fun. Again, this isn't like a really awesome work of art. It's just really sweet and cute and fun. So I'm gonna just take my glue gun, which is all heated up. I should probably clear my workspace, right? So I don't unintentionally glue other things. And really, I'm hoping this just spurs you on to your ideas that you can create some really fun cards that you don't need to feel the need to be really like professional or fancy. Um, we're going to be just having fun with this. And I hope you're feeling um, some joy and happiness as we just kind of indulge in all of this pink and red and hearts and all things of this Hallmark holiday. I call it a Hallmark holiday because I don't even know the story. I should look it up. But I just think it's just a really, again, a fun way to remind me to be very practical in the people that I love and just to reach out to them and let them know I care about them and to remember those who maybe um, are feeling a bit lonely and not loved this season of their lives. So on this one in particular, I just put in some stamps and I like to use the markers for the stamps. I just use Crayola markers. I don't use like fancy stamp markers. They work beautifully. So this one is all ready to go. I can put a quick message in and um, put it in the envelope. In envelope. Let's see if I can talk. I'm just gonna set this to the side. Let's go ahead now. I'm gonna take one of these splatter pieces of paper. So this is one of the little four by six. And I'm thinking with this one, what I wanna do is I want to um, just go ahead and create a little bit of a collage. I just think this is simple and beautiful. We could do it flat like this, and I could maybe do like the hearts are falling out of it even. We could do something like that. That's kind of cute. I really kind of like the idea though of um, we could always go like this. I kind of like the idea of a, a diagonal. And so you play around with your paper. I'm going to bring this in just a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing here. And this is going to be, I, it's going to be off the edges a bit, but that's okay because the envelope is bigger. So I can be a little bit, um, have a little bit of fun with this one and have it coming off the edges, which I just think that's kind of fun. I'm also going to put a tag. I'm thinking this one would be a really fun bookmark. And I'm also thinking, so let's go ahead, be careful if you're using a glue gun that you don't burn your fingers. I'm gonna go ahead and put lay that down and I'll just put a little bit of extra glue down here. And you had noticed perhaps that I had accidentally torn the side right there a little bit, but that's okay, I'm not bothered about that. I am just gonna go ahead and lay that down like that. And then I'm gonna put a couple of hearts. Maybe I'll just put a little glue gun right here. And I love the way the splatters are showing up, right? So, so pretty. Really, it looks multi-layered. And again, it's not like we just spent a little bit of time. Basically, the worst part is like letting everything dry, right? It takes a while just to make sure it all dries correctly. Okay, and I think with this one, I'm gonna lay the hearts against each other like that. Now what I'm gonna do at the top is I'm gonna put a hole punch and I'm gonna put a piece of ribbon through it that way someone can use it. Well, I mean, you could still use it for a bookmark, right? But I just think this adds a little bit, just a little bit more fanciness to it. I'm gonna put this in right in here. And actually, I'm gonna make this a couple. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger because I'm gonna use some ribbon and that's just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go over and grab my ribbon and see where I put my scissors. Here they are. 
And I'm going to just snip some ribbon here. I should have opened it before I started. And I had just found some ribbon at the craft store and it was, was it on sale? It probably was because I have all of their Valentine stuff out right now. So here we go. And I mean, you could, if you wanted to as well, probably glue the ribbon with the glue gun if you're using a glue gun because glue guns are magical. <laughs> they take care of all sorts of surfaces, right? But I thought it would just look really nice to have that loop-de-loop -loop all the way through. <clears throat> and what I'm, excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and just, and I just dumped it into my watercolor. Look at what I did. Not a big deal. It'll just be a little bit stained pink. At least it landed in the right colors, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just tie this knot through. You know what I think I will do though, is I will put a little bit of glue gun right here so it stays and doesn't come unknotted. So I'm gonna put just a smidgen of glue right there and then go ahead and just hold it down for a second. And the really nice thing is, this will be a very sturdy bookmark. If you had a picture, for example, if you maybe wanted to put, let's back this up, if you wanted to put a picture of maybe a loved one or maybe, I don't you know, maybe you're sending this to your grandma, for example, and you wanna cut out a heart-shaped picture of the family if you found one and printed it off your phone, that would be really cute. The other thing I'm thinking of doing is you have this really fun front, and on the back now, you can write out, take your Micron pen or even take one of the Crayola pens, and you can write out a letter or a note, I love you, thinking about you, you know, stick it in the envelope. You could, you, know, you don't have to stick it in a card, you certainly could stick in a card or, you know, just grab an envelope and where are my envelopes? They are around, but this will fit in just beautifully in the envelopes and it'll be great. What a fun thing to receive, right? It, it, we'll get it out for Valentine's Day. So we have that one. Now, another option I thought, I had this smaller, I had found some pink note card paper and put some splatters on that. I am just in a big, I'm just loving splattering right now. And then just taking the the, the uh, beautiful um, the, the uh, beautiful floral that we did and just putting on, I'm just gonna put one. I think one is plenty. And I am kind of loving the idea of off to this side a bit and having a lot of space up here. I think that just has a very elegant way. You'll notice too, I had unintentionally ripped my flower as I was cutting it, but I'm not worried about that because the glue will take care of that for me. We'll just get it all nicely glued down. I'm just putting glue in the middle and then I will put any extra glue as I need to. Try not to burn myself. Okay, so this is card number two. And isn't this very fun? And I just, I think this is cute. This is super cute. And you can certainly, if you wanted to create a border, you certainly could. I haven't put anyone in the middle of here. The other thing you could also do is, you know, put a heart there inside. Okay, so here we go. Isn't this fun? And this is not taking a lot of time, right? So that's another, there's our card. We have our bookmark. Now we have these cards, which I did go ahead and I have put just a little bit of splattering. One of the things I was thinking that we could do is you could take your watercolor now, <clears throat> all the splattering on this one, and on this card, you could actually glue it down here we could do just multi-layering. We could, for example, go like this. All sorts of things that you can do. This one seems too small, right? But maybe I put it over to the side and we have the hearts coming out of it. You could also turn it lengthwise and we could just do really pretty. We can do um, almost making it look like a ring going all the way around. That may not, my hearts are different sizes, but it's cute. We could do something like that. I kind of think I am going to lay this down. The other option too would be to do a stamp and then put the hearts around it. For example, where's my, you're just my type, which I think is a super cute stamp. Let me bring this closer in so you can see everything that I'm doing here. Okay, I'm gonna pull, come back, pull that right in there and pull that in. So then I could take this and, in fact, what I'm going to do is I had done brown splatters on this one. So because we've got brown splatters on this, I'm even gonna create the watercolor paper almost a bit off center. 
And then I'm going to put the stamp right here, I think. And hopefully, yeah, you can see that. Pulling this up just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my, grab my brown marker. Just checking the time here. And you know what? This must be a brand new stamp. I had just rediscovered I had a box of stamps. So I am kind of playing here a little bit of mixed media as we do watercolor, stamping, markers, micron pen, right? And I know there's many, many stamp artists who do such beautiful, intricate work. And you know, I'm always kind of at the mindset of, I know enough to be dangerous when it comes to stamping, right? I know enough to be dangerous and I've not been really fancy or eloquent with them. So we're gonna see how this goes. All right, so I wanna make sure I have my words nicely inked. Okay, so I'm gonna go here in the corner and I'm gonna go nice and hold that down really, really hard. Okay. You're just my type. Okay, you can see, and it's not overwhelming, which I kind of love that, right? I don't need it to be super overwhelming, and I think what I will do is I'm just gonna put a couple of a couple of different colored ones. My ombre hearts here. We're gonna go just like that. Isn't that cute? I think that's actually super cute. And then what I'm probably gonna do is I'll use that stamp maybe somewhere else too. So let me go ahead and lay that down. And so we've done two cards, we've done a bookmark, we used our flowers, and you can hopefully, I just wanted to give you ideas of, you know, you're probably going to come up with even more ideas that are prettier, fancier, all the things. It's kind of fun too when you see someone doing it and it sparks your ideas, right? You think, oh, I could do it like this, or I can do it this way, or I could add in ribbon here, or I could even maybe loop some ribbon in. I mean, there's just so many things you can do. So I hope this encourages you to, to, first of all, to create, to grab any supplies you have left over from last year, and then also to just enjoy the season, enjoy this, the color, um, and a little bit of chocolate, if you enjoy chocolate like I do. Mail, grab some some uh, stamps. If you don't have any stamps, mail out just a card or two. Bring a bright smile to someone else's day. I know I had a dear friend years ago. Well, she's still, it's one of my dearest friends. Um, but years ago, she had sent me this beautiful Valentine's Day. I'll have to find it. Um, it's just a beautiful Valentine's Day artwork. And it was, she had taken paper and stamps and then all sorts of really beautiful Valentine-esque sayings and it just and it was big it was like um it was like a nine by twelve size and I got it. it was it was a year that I think being alone it just had been a hard year uh, had had I was the one who needed a bit of um someone to encourage me and it was I, I don't think she knew and I don't even know what inspired her to do it but it was such a sweet gift and I've always, always remembered it and just really appreciated her thoughtfulness. So I hope that encourages you today. All right, and this is cute too, right? And this is again, these are, although we're using bright colors, these don't feel overtly bright, right? Don't forget to put your sign, your name at the back. It feels really fun. It feels very Valentine's-y, but I don't feel like we're being terribly, I mean, it's a bit Pepto-Bismol, but it's not, it's not terribly, right? So again, keep on going. There's so many options. You know, you could take, you could also write a poem, like a, or a verse, and then, I think I might do that with this one, and then go ahead and put the flower over it. So of course, it'll be covering some of it, but that's just the fun and the beauty of it. So enjoy this. I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. We, I might pop in with just one or two more projects. I have a really fun watercolor idea of doing like a Valentine home with like a really um, some maybe a cake in the window and a bunch of flowers, of course, tons of flowers. So I hope you have a fantastic day. If you would like another Valentine's Day project, let me know in the comments and I will create one. All right, you guys, take care and I will see you very, very soon.